but without much further to do, hello, 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 beautiful people of the internet. My name is Andrew. I'm here with the Makerspace, um, and we are all here with the NC State University Libraries. Um, I use he, him pronouns, um, and I'm coming at you live from the uh, NCSU Hill Makerspace. Um, what was it? So the point of the stream is that we are unfortunately unable to help y'all out and be there in person for y'all to talk with you or consult with you about your projects or whatever. Um, oh, hey y'all. Um, and so this is kind of our, like a drop-in session. So if you have questions about the space or the library or, or was it what we do, um, or what we do, or if you have specific questions about projects, um, we are here to help you out as best we can. And if we can't, we're here to point you towards someone who can help you better than we can. Um, what was it? But in the meantime, I'm going to be showing y'all a crash course in digital embroidery. And this is a second part to the um, digital embroidery uh, stream that we did last week where we made the, where we made the designs in Inkscape. Um, and then digitize them using Ink Stitch um, to. Ooh, sorry. I need to take a breath every now and then. I forget that I cannot just keep talking. <laughs> um, but so I. Uh, but this is the part where we actually make the magic happen and of turning it into something real. You know. Also, apologies for adjusting my mask. It keeps falling down. Uh, um, but yeah, so, okay, without much further to do, um, and we are just going to pretend like this is the start of the stream because I completely forgot to start recording until just now after I finished the intro, but it's okay. Um, Inkscape, yes, Inkscape is a free tool. Um, it's an open source, uh, digital design software much, um, and it acts really, really similar to Illustrator. It's just a little less UI friendly um, just because it is free um, and there's no one actually throwing money behind it um, necessarily as far as I know um, but yes Inkscape is a free tool Ink Stitch is also a free tool um, yes thank you thank you um, was it to my awesome mod today um, the, uh, they posted the link into the into the chat um, it is a great tool I highly recommend it if you want to just screw around, get used to digital design, or if you want to make some cool stuff with it. Um, but yeah, so last week, what we did is we made a file of some hearts. So let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Da -da 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 -da. What was it? So we had three hearts. So what was it? Uh, the design was three hearts. Um, they were pixelated? Question mark. I don't know. They uh, they had some geometric design going on. Uh, what was it? We decided that pixelation was an element that we no longer needed, <laughs> which is a fancy way of saying it seemed like a pain to go and continue it. So we, you know what? It looks pretty as it is. So we're gonna take it as it is. Um, let's see if I can find it. That is, mm -hmm. here we go. Cool. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ink Stitch. Yes, the Stitch Pathing plugin um, is also open source and free. It is a great tool. Um, was it? And I highly recommend it. Um, just because, mo like, <laughs> this is a very niche. Uh, this is a very niche area um, of crafts to know to know about. So I, so we never, so I highly don't, ex, don't, um, what was it? So if you don't know this, it is A-OK. -okay. I did not know this for a long time. Um, I never thought I would need this until I got into this stuff. Um, but it is the, uh, most embroidery softwares that do what Ink Stitch does, uh, or provide a s similar service, they can be really expensive. Um, like upwards of a hundred dollars per license um it depends and it's out there and some of them are good some of them are bad you know it's how the universe works um 
but also like it's free and it works pretty well um what was it considering that you know it's free and open source um that said if you also want to like you know screw around a little uh change the algorithms make it better make it yours that's also completely possible as far as i'm aware um i have not done that because uh i've only taken java um but yeah was it was it it is it is a really great resource and was it okay here we go let's transition already so this is this this is the design that we made last week right um was well, so this is all embroidered or this is already run through ink stitch and it's um having um algorithms question mark the plugin the plugin did its magic and now it's all done um what was it so what was it if we grab um, if we grab a USB stick and plug this in real quick, let's see, we should be able to just save this straight on there. Let's see, uh, uh, uh hello, where are you? What was it? Embroider, apply. Also, if um, our setup this week looks a or for this stream looks a little different um, from last week's, um, it's because so uh, was it, I got a little creative and decided uh, the way that our current camera setup worked, uh, I, I I didn't love it, so I decided I was just gonna you know what I I was just gonna um, jury rig. The camera that we usually use for the for for looking at me um, onto one of the vents. Um, so if that suddenly falls, it's because it was not taped down well. Heads up. Um, but yeah, what was it? Um, if if y'all have any problems, just let me know. We can change it back to the original thing real quick and easy. Um, I just thought this would be better because you get better of a bird's eye view. Um, Let's see. File save as. Where are you? P E S. Okay, and then we're gonna save it in the USB. Wow, there's a lot of things in this USB. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna delete. Can I just delete all of this? Okay, I'm just gonna delete the PS files because I'm sure the rest of it is fine. Um, Andrew, Twitch, parts, save. Okay. So, let's talk about the embroidery machine. And where did I leave? Hold on, give me one second. Now I'm ready to talk about the embroidery machine. Um, <sighs> oof. So, the way this is gonna work out is that if we transition back um, over to here, let's see, there we go. Um, so what we're using is what we have in the space here. It's called the Brother P800, um, and it is a digital embroidery machine. It is real powerful. It's real strong. It's um, was it, it'll take the file that we have as soon as we plug the USB stick in. Theoretically, theoretically, we should be able to just hit push and just let it go. So here comes the fun part. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna stop talking about it and get to it, but just real brief overview. 
things go wrong with this embroidery machine real easy just because uh, there's a thousand, there's a couple of thousand stitches going in and out a second. So, uh, that's what's going to take two hours because I'm pretty sure that the embroidery is not supposed to take longer than five minutes, maybe 10. Um, so first things first, let's grab, let's talk about, um, how the embroidery machine works. Um, crap. also hold on one second. I forgot to grab fabric. Huh. Yes. Also, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's the brother P eight hundred. Um, this is what we use in the this is what we use in the space, and it's it's a great machine. Okay, so, oof. first things first, we need to choose a fabric. So there's a couple criteria that one I went over last week. Um, first of all, this is embroidery thread, so this is not actual fabric. Um, but fabric that we that is su best suited for actually, hold on. There we go. So fabric that is best suited for this kind of work um, is fabric that is thick, it has a smooth texture, um, is able to take a beating, uh, for lack of a better way to say that. Uh, it's durable. It's durable. That's a better way to say that. Um, fabric that is thick, durable, um, will not, was it does not stretch easily, or it's stiff, and uh, it's not too thick to the point where the needle can't go through. Uh, so let's see. And so just a quick way to test for the thickness part is holding it up to the light. Like I can tell you right now, just from looking at this, from looking at this material, uh, here we go, that it's too thin and it's too weak because if I hold it up to the light, You can see through it. You can see the light. You can see light through it, really easily, um, and that's just—it's just a sign. It's too weak. It's gonna. Be, and what happens when you get, or what happens when you use fabric like that, is that it just—it rips and tears really easily, and the puncture holes that the needle makes that goes in and out. It's just gonna make. It's just gonna become. The holes are gonna become bigger as you keep on, um, as you keep on embroidering. So, a good standard kind of uh, was it a good was it a good. How do I say this? A good fabric to use um, that I typically recommend is canvas like this. What was it here? It's stiff. It's thick, and it doesn't stretch very well. Um, what was it? So you can, what was it? And another one that I also recommend is felt. If you want something that's a little bit more um, fashionable, I, I don't know. Uh, something that's a little softer, like it has like a texture that's a little uh, softer. Um, what was it? Or fluffier, I recommend felt as well, like like the, like the stiff kind. Um, Woo! Sorry. <laughs> there we go. There we are. Um, but what was it? As of today, we have some felt that someone someone donated to the space, or they left it and they never came back for it. So we have decided to reappropriate it. 
and use it for something for use it for something else. Use it for a new project. Um, so first thing, so let's talk about what happens with the machine. Ooh, stay still, please. <laughs> um, so actually, let's move let's move the machine out of the way for a hot second because there's a couple steps that happen before we actually throw it in. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to determine what kind of size the um, what kind of size this is. So if we make a quick, so if we throw this back, let's see, and take a look at the dimensions real quick. Mm -hmm. What was it? I'm going to change this to inches because it's the one that I know just more easily. Um, let's see. It's the entire thing is roughly 10 inches. Oh, geez. I'm pretty sure that is not going to fit onto this. Um, so let's make this smaller. What was it? Okay, let's make this, was it, let's save the dimensions. Let's make this just a ton smaller. Actually, I forget how big the frames are. Um, so what's happening is that the frames are the things that you put the fabric into, right? And then the machine will uh, embroider in and out um, as you go through. Yeah, yeah, the maximum proof size is five by seven. And even then it has, it's got a really precarious, um, how should I say, you want to give it some margins because it's a little picky. It likes it's a, it likes some space. Yeah, it's five by seven um, inches, so that's fun. What was it actually? Yeah, uh, it's five by seven, which means that it should probably be somewhere around four point five to six inches at maximum. Let's see. Uh, let's just change this to 4.5 real quick, see what happens. Let's see. Move this to the center. Restitch the graphic after resizing to reset this. Yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Um, so what our, our wonderful mod is talking about right now is the fact that when we run the embroidery stitching, uh, or when we run the uh, ink stitch through it, you know, and do the pathing program on it, um, what was it? We can scale it down, like we can scale it down now, um, or we can scale it down in the machine, because it has some scale functions that are, uh, that has some scale functions. However, the problem is um, the way that it's, the, it's programmed, um, it doesn't automatically reset or not reset, uh, well, it doesn't automatically set the stitches um, to the appropriate size. Um, so you might, so like something on a scale that it was earlier, it might have, I don't know, a thousand, or somewhere between 200 to 800 more stitches than this currently would, which is why it's important to re, um, re raster, um, repath, repath everything. What was it? So this is also still, this is seven inches. That is still too long. We gotta cut this down to like 6.5. Okay, that is doable. Okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What was it? And our wonderful, wonderful, awesome moderator is Nick. He kicks butt. Um, and he also is really good at this kind of stuff. Um, and also basically anything else that exists inside the makerspace. So if you have any questions, you can ask him as well. Um, and he will, there's a good chance he might know more than I do, <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, but yeah. Okay, so here we are. And then we're just gonna re, we're gonna re-embroider this, or repath this, apply. Close. Okay, here we are. And now what happens if we save as? Ooh, <laughs> that 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 is fair. Um, though I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know how, how I don't know if I can qualify this like, how much experience I can qualify this as. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's say this as a PS. Um, also, you deserve all this flattery. What are you talking about? Um, okay. So, okay, here we go. Saving. What's it? We're going to replace it. But bam. All right. So there we are. Um, and now it should fit inside of the largest hoop. Um, and what the hoop does is it keeps the fabric in place as the, so the machine has an arm. Um, what was it? Let me, let me move back so that y'all can see. Let me actually move this back really quick so y'all can see. The machine has an arm here. What happens is we place, um, the, was it the fabric inside of this hoop? Um, and then we throw it onto onto the arm, and the arm moves it around up and up and down, as the scissors require. And the needles and the needles move up and down, so the needle doesn't have to move and it can stay stationary. Ugh. Okay. So I'm gonna be honest. This is the part that I always kind of uh, not dread. Uh, this is the part that I don't love the most. Well, I love this entire process, but also, I kind of don't love this part of the process. Um, so what, I, what I'm talking about is, I am placing the, I'm placing the fabric inside of the hoop. Um, and so, normally, uh, what was it, and so, and so this is what you would also do with hand embroidery. Um, what was it, because, you know, you need something to keep the, um, the fabric that you're embroidering tight and stretched, or taut and stretched. Um, and so you have a hoop and it's actually, I can show you really quickly, actually it's in the other, it's in the other cabinet, so I'll, was it, I'll show y'all later if I have time, um, but it's actually, oof, oof, um, it is, so was it, it's circular and it's basically the same thing, um, was it? So first thing you want to do is you want to cut out. You want to cut out your fabric. I'm doing this here because the the bolt of fabric, uh, the bolt of, uh, the bolt, um, of, of canvas is just kind of too big to put on the table. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. What was it? And what was it? Don't be stingy if you can. With the with the fabric that you cut out, because um, you it'll make things easier for putting this into the into the into the hoop, um, and it'll it'll just be it'll uh, was it that's it's gonna be an interesting process. So just make this easier on yourself if you can. Um, so while I'm cutting this out, let's talk about what's happening, what's going to happen. Um, because, hold on. Yeah. This should be, this should be enough. Um. But what's going on right now is that I'm going to place it into the hoop. Um, and you want to have the fabric, right? You know, that's the thing that you're actually placing in there and you're embroidering. And you also want to have, what is up with these scissors? There we go. And you also want to have a piece of... Ooh, hold on, sorry. If you can't tell, I am not the greatest at multitasking. Um, here we go. Okay. Um, you want to have some. What is it called? 
What is it called? Um, not this. Here we go. Uh, you want some a week? No, that's not the word. Ah, it should be on here. Tear away. That's right. Sorry. The word is tear away and backing. Um, I promise you, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> what was it? And you want to have the tearaway there so that it had, so, there's a couple reasons, um, and honestly, I'm not an expert in why. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, it gives me this back stitching to hold on to, um, because you're going to have the stitching on top, which is the fancy embroidery bit that looks all pretty, and then you're going to have the stitching on the bottom from the bobbin. Um, that's gonna keep it stable and strong um, and the tearaway handles that part okay so let me turn the camera we have our piece of fabric voila and so the order goes you want to have it's like a sandwich um, where is this Okay, sorry, I forgot. One other piece. Right. So it goes like a sandwich. You have your base, your bread. Um, and also make sure, make sure that the, um, this, uh, sorry, the stuff that you uh, put the arm on, what was it, this, or, make sure that the orientation of this hoop is correct and you can tell what, um, by the holes. Here we go. Um, they should look like little uh, Russian nesting dolls pointing down. Um, what was it? And what's going to happen is you're going to have your bread, and then you're going to have your tear away, and then you're going to have your... Ah. And then you're going to have your fabric, and then you're going to have your top layer of bread. What was it? Oh, also, uh, make sure that the orientation of the top part of the hoop is correct as well. And you can tell because um, you should be seeing these little tiny arrows. Hold on. Yeah, these teeny tiny arrows and these notches, um, which are indicators for that. Okay, so you're just going to place it inside the hoop like this and press down Ugh, firmly. Make sure that the backing is not slipping through and that you can see it on all sides. Well, as many of the sides as the backing will cover. Let's be honest. Um, what was it? So Nick says, it's there monthly to provide an unstructured fiber mesh that will catch any stitches that, that sound cause stress during stitching. Some fabrics can be embroidered without it, but assist in making sure holes aren't torn in the base fabric. Wow, thank you. That was very educational. Yes, yes, absolutely that. I endorse that. I endorse that answer, um, but not politically, because I I'm not a politician. Uh, but no, yeah, was it that that makes absolute sense, um, and I completely agree with it. What was it? Okay, so here we are, and what was it? Now you just want to tighten tighten this tighten the hoop which you can do by twisting this. Um, here, let me see. Yeah, that's, that's a better view. What was it? And I'm gonna just twist it. Uh, twist it. Ah, I can speak words today. Um, and so what you wanna have is you want it to be as taut as possible, which means that it shouldn't be f flexible like this. Um, and when you flick it, you should, you should hear like a drum sound. Sound got in there, could was the intended word. Gotcha, gotcha, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, that will catch any such as I could cause stress, yes. Um, and that was it, yes. That makes absolute sense. Um, okay, what was it? And so what happens in, is when you've tightened the screw, um, what was it? But 
it's what was it but the fabric or the um, or the tearaway is not stretch or is not taut enough is you can un is you can unscrew the hoop right what was it and keep it in place or, and press down on on the top of the hoop as you try to pull the hoop out or as you try to, oh crap um, as you try to pull the fabric out ooh fudge ooh okay um, you want to make sure that you're using a lot of force and if you have another set of hands that's gonna be nice I'm not gonna lie it's always easier with more people it's how the world works things things can be easier if you let people help you or if you ask for help um, so we're, we can just pull on this oof Make sure not to press, not make sure not to pull too hard, so that you tear the backing, because it, the backing itself is, it's got a paper-like quality to it. So and it's meant to be torn away. So if you pull hard enough, it will tear away. Um, and it's also called it's also called tear away because at the end, when you're done with it, and you don't want white paper on the back of it, you can just tear tear it away. Also, if you just want to like throw it in the wash a couple times, that works too. It usually dissolves. I say usually. Um, though it's like perfectly safe for your clothes and your fabrics and etc. Also, whew, I'm turning red. I'm about to sweat. Let's see, okay. The nice thing about the hoops for the brother is that they don't have the greatest grip, I'm not gonna lie, because they're metal, but what you can do is they provide you with this teeny, teeny, tiny uh, screwdriver that you can... Nope, this is the wrong screwdriver, hold on. Where are you? I promise you it exists. And it makes your life easier. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah, I think I found you. Hello. Yeah. Well, the last one's the last one. The screwdriver head was too small. This one though, it's thicker, and we'll be able to match the screw easier, like so. And so you're gonna turn it. Like so. Oof. Yeah, I will say at the end of this, uh, I'm really glad I wore deodorant. What was it an antiperspirant? Because like you build up a sweat, or at least I do. If you're more experienced with this, you just kind of like it's made of fibers, not just similar to paper. So with some water, it'll degrade it into pulp and wash out eventually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah the tear away. Um, yeah, but like, I've seen Nick, what was it, he's, what was it, he's just done this more times, is the makerspace warmer than usual? I, you know what, I don't know, I think it's because it's gotten just warmer in general in NC, because we had that perfect week of us just, it's in the perfect spot of in the 60s, but not freezing, but it's just chilly enough that you can wear whatever you want, and your wardrobe looks great. And, but now we went back up a little. <sighs> Sigh. Um, but, anyways, it's uh, but was well, I've seen Nick just like pop it in there, bam, turn, you're done. It worked like that this time. Sometimes it doesn't go that quickly or that easily, um, because if you have more stretching material. Um, like if you're embroidering straight onto a piece of fabric or, or clothing, that can sometimes not happen. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna set this aside. Sometimes it explodes. Yeah, that too, that too. 
it's uh this is the part of the process i was talking about where sometimes it just it gets hard like we had um what was it we were working together on a sweater for what was it a sweater uh embroidering a sweater that was fleece and stretchy and it was thick but it was stretchy and it was just it took us a solid 30 minutes of just wrestling with a thing with three people and hands on it to just uh, to, to make it fit and tight as possible what was it um okay so the next thing that's gonna happen is you want to plug it in because that's important um what was it because You know, it's not gonna run if it's not turned on. That's how electricity works. Not electricity. Electric power, electrically powered machines work. Okay, so now it's gonna beep it. It's gonna beep at us really quickly. Okay, here we are. So this, here this is. Oof. Ooh, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, okay. Y'all can see it much better this way. So. First things first, always check the bobbin. What was it? This is a thing that I've been repeating, and I hope this catches on, and I hope if people see this, they'll just think, hey, let's check the bobbin first. Because, please check the bobbin. It would, it, it makes things easier on you. Um, so, with a brother machine, just in general, you want a plastic clear spool um, of our bobbin. So, let's see if I can find one. What was it? Somewhere within all the stuff that I have brought. Uh, unlike the sewing machines, this machine does not feature a pedal. It moves mostly via the motors, though the wheel at the right can be used to adjust the needle's movement. Yes, absolutely. Um, so this is the wheel that uh, Nick is Nick is uh, referring to, and it's just there for manual. Uh, don't worry about that. That was just the bolts of canvas falling. Um, What's it? Also, I did not realize this, but someone put stickers uh, saying this was the empty seat makerspaces. Um, in very faint, in very very faint lettering. Um, what was it? But yeah, this is the this is the manual crank. Um, what was it? So let's see if I can find. Da, 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 da. Hello, here we are. Yes. Um, but yeah, because the machine does everything for you, you don't need to pedal, which is great. That's the whole point of the digitization, so that you can do you can worry about exactly where what happens where and when, then. Um, and so I'm gonna show y'all this. This is a clear plastic spool. This is the spool that you're, if you're gonna work with machines in the space, this is mostly, mainly the only type of spool that you're actually gonna need, or type of bobbin spool that you're gonna need. Um, and actually this one is empty, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be able to show y'all how to wind it. So, first things first, let's grab some embroidery bobbin thread, because that is a thing, yes, it is a thing. Hello, yes, found you. Okay. Um, so something to keep in note while you do this. Embroidery thread and sewing thread are very different. Like, we have had, I, I've shown y'all before on previous streams the graveyard of machines underneath this table that have died, specifically fabric and slash textile machines, i.e. sewing machines and embroidery machines that have died. Like. I can see right now I'm pointing to a embroidery machine that's been dead for about six months. Yeah. Um, what was it? And a lot of them are often because you um, people have used sewing thread, when in reality you need to use embroidery thread because it's finer and smoother, and sewing thread is rougher in texture and it's easier for it to get tangled on the inside of the machine. Um, so first things first is also like 
this might was if this feels complicated to you do not worry like at all at all like legitimately there are guides here that are numbered that tell you exactly where the threat goes and how um so this is not complicated it is just it's a lot of steps that's it it's just it ain't it ain't it, it's not uh terribly complicated it's just a lot of steps where did i put that bottom i do this all the time with my keys oh um ah hello i put it next to the keyboard okay so first things first i'm i'm going to thread the embroidery thread hello and then so i'm going to go down one and there's arrows and guides like i'm the, the way the camera set up it's a little hard to see right now but if you look at it in person you'll just be able to tell i'm going over through two and then around three and then now i am supposed to wind this a couple times manually around the bobbin Hello. There we go, finally. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this because I'm, I'm winding this a lot just because I um <laughs> I pulled out too much thread earlier. <laughs> um what was it? And then usually there's a little thing that you can put your thread through to make sure that it's caught. Let's see. Where are you? Ha, huh, here's here's the end of the thread. Also, I realize that what was it? It looks real thin. Normally it causes the machine to catch and consume the fabric. Think uh what was it? Sewing thread performs very poorly. Yeah. Think of VCR player eating tape but with massive fast moving <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um yes there's, yeah, it's a thing. So the, what was it? And the reason that we also emphasize that it's only supposed to be clear plastic spools for most of our fabric ma machines is because m mainly they're supposed to be mostly, um, what should we call them? Except for the Berninas, which is one very specific type of sewing machine that we have here at the space. And we have a couple. Um, you're you're mainly you're mainly going to use plastic spools, clear like this. Um, but a lot of people see the metal ones and they think, "Ooh, pretty," um, and just jump straight towards it. Okay, so then I'm going to press down like so. Okay, and then what was it? I'm going to press span. And we're gonna wind the bobbin. Ah, stop. What happened here? Oh, we got caught in the notch. Fun. Oof. This is just how the machine just generally works. It thrives on chaos. And what was it? What happened there was that the um, there's a little notch on the spool of, of, of the big the big spool of embroidery thread and it's there so that you can it's there so you can place we recommend eye protection we recommend eye protection what was it okay so the machine is fairly safe when used properly but it's definitely launched shards of metal needles when things have gone wrong we recommend eye protection when getting near to the needle during the embroidery phase absolutely absolutely what was it unless you're going to turn it off i highly suggest was it once once it's on and going and like pumping out thousands of needles or thousands of stitches a minute i highly recommend highly recommend don't touch it unless you're gonna stop it because uh nah like it's it's a, it's a recommend it's a fairly safe machine but also needles have been known to break because you know it's like there's a couple thousand stitches going in and out a minute um, so, it's just commonplace. What was it? Okay. So, theoretically, 
if this if this will catch correctly. We should not be encountering. Oh right, I need to push this push this, push this back. Close it. We should now be winding the bobbin properly. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on the actual bobbin, which is on crashing down to look at it, because sometimes what can happen is first of all, I can get caught like that again. Oof. why I'm re-threading it, um, because I got caught in that little notch again on the spool. Um, what was it? You know what? I'm actually going to use the... Um, so we normally have the small thing. We don't... What was it? It's an optional thing. It's a little cap to make sure that the spool doesn't move. There are differing opinions on whether or not people should use it within our staff. Like, it's not a big thing, it's just like small, but people have noticed changes. But just for the sake of this. Nope, nope, that did not help. That did not help. Why are you. Hello. Okay. Will you go now? Please don't get caught this time. Oops. We gotta, we gotta stop for a hot second. And here's why. What was it? I'm glad I checked the um, embroidery machine because what has happened is that the string snapped and it started winding underneath. So if I just pull this off, which I'm pretty sure I'm just able to do. Really hope this thing doesn't break. There we go. You can see, well, so actually, I don't know if you can see. Can y'all see? Uh, there is a whole mess of just strings caught underneath. This is what nested. And this happens a lot, which is why we recommend that people watch. Everything that I say, everything that I recommend that you do, it's not because, like, it's, uh, you know, it's not because, oh, this is good practice for this long term, even though it is. Uh, it's not just because. It's also, it's also because, just really, these are things that you're going to have to fix. A l There's a really good chance you're going to have to fix. Because the machine is, it's, it's good, and it does really, it makes really cool stuff, but also, like, It, it thrives off of chaos and and your personal misery sometimes. <laughs> um, which is how making things goes, you know? What was it? And I'm just... I'm on th what was it? I'm just pulling off all the thread from the spool because the end of this... You know, the end, the end broke. So I have to... There we go. Um... And it makes a really, but like with all, like with all the processes of creating, it just failure is a part of this, uh, part, part of this machine, just especially more so than maybe some of the other machines. Um, okay, so I'm rewinding the bo I'm rewinding the bobbin spool. Okay. And like so. Right, I need to put the base on again. Like so. Actually, you know what? If the notch is on that side, I can just flip it. And that should work too. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, but I did now. It's fine. So I move this over now, and hopefully it starts spinning, and the bobbin is filling up now. Perfect. Um, 
Okay. So. Okay, uh, so now we just wait for a little bit uh, while it finishes up spinning. Um, and it'll usually stop at some point automatically. Um, but also, if you just look at it, if it looks like it's filling out most, or if not a lot of the thread, um, then you're probably good to go. I'm just being careful and just doing a lot just in case. Because the worst thing that could happen is that I don't use all of it, and that the next person who uses it gets to say, hey, this one's already done and pre preset for me. Which is, honestly, that's a rad feeling. <laughs> that's, that's the best feeling sometimes, of just getting there. Yep. Um, so it stopped this time just because it was it wound so much that it hit um, this metal base. And so I'm gonna, now I'm gonna pull it off. Oof. Also, I realize that the thread is very thin and it's white. So if if it looks like I'm not holding anything and I'm pinching things, or if I'm pinching if I'm pinching one end of the thread and the and I'm holding a bobbin in the other and you don't see the thread in between it and I'm just talking about it uh, like a maniac. Was it? Just know that I am holding it. Also, what is up with this? Hello. Oh, right, I need to move it back. That's what it is. Hello. Okay. There we go. Okay, here we are, and we're going to cut this off. Okay, and then we're going to... I'm gonna place this right here in front of the keyboard. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull off the thread. What was it? Okay. And I'm gonna wind this back up. And put this back in there. Let's see, where is it? Here is the notch. Sometimes the notch, sometimes the spools come with these notches, sometimes they're made because someone just took an exacto knife to it. Um, okay, so I threw that back in there. Okay, so next thing. I'm gonna turn off the light, actually. Let's see if I can turn off the light. Um, actually, why don't I just turn off the power? That'll probably be easier. Just so y'all have a better idea of what it looks like. Uh, can y'all see like this? That's a good question. Can y'all see better like this? If we're talking about this bit, nope, this is just completely covered. Okay, that's fine. Also, this is a sticky note. Uh, I, I should probably just clarify, that's a sticky note right there. It's there just because um, there are a couple settings on the machine that I'll talk about when I get to it. It's just good to keep in mind um, and it's good to write down. Okay, so let's talk about this. So, hmm. This is gonna be a little boring, but because I don't wanna reset the cameras because that's gonna take a while. Um, and I feel like we're already running through time pretty quickly. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and st um, I'm gonna narrate what I'm doing. Um, if y'all have questions, you can ask me. It's about the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna thread the bobbin, um, and what the bobbin does is actually come on. It was in the wrong direction. Um, and the, what what the bobbin does is that Come on. I believe in you. I believe in you, machine. Okay. I think I got it. Uh, 
Um, this, and then we want to put the cover on. Where did I put the cover? Hello, here it is. Um, so what I did was I inserted the bobbin and I made sure that it had enough, which is something that you always want to do. Um, it's the first thing you want to do. Um, just because if there isn't any, if there's any bobbin, if there isn't a bobbin that's that doesn't have enough thread on it, um, you can't do any back stitching, which means that it's gonna look real interesting. Your top layer is gonna look real interesting, and it's gonna probably be a little thin and a little weak. The embroidery itself. Okay, so now that that's happened, what's gonna happen is the fun part, where we get to choose a color. So, considering these are hearts. Okay, so question time for the audience. Um, do y'all think that I should do red or a nice blue? I'm leaning towards the blue myself right now, but red is very classic, and there are, we do have some really nice ones. Also, FYI, if y'all, whenever y'all actually come into this space, heads up, don't ever grab because the way that uh, this might be changed, and this is minor, but this might save you some time later on. <laughs> don't ever grab these by the handle. Uh, these are the these are the containers of embroidery, uh, embroidery thread. Don't ever hold these by the handle because they are prone to falling out easily. And then you have a lot of you have a lot of spools of thread on the floor. How do I know this? It's totally not like I've done this like three times. It's no, never. <coughs> um, but that is what's happening. Okay, so ooh, I will say there is this thread which is really really pretty. Ooh. I don't know. I really don't know. What was it? Okay. Red is the color of NC State, but I do like a good makerspace. Wait, wait, our color is orange. I didn't realize that we had a color. Okay, so... Makerspace orange. What was it? Okay. Uh, I mean, it sounds like we have three hearts, and they're gonna go in order. So, what was it? Our logo is red, orange, and gray. I believe. Okay. I don't know if we have any gray. Actually, let's see. Hmm. Well, this is all the pastel colors, or not pastel colors. Uh, skin tones? Question mark. Hmm. Um. That doesn't look like skin tonish. Where are your where are the grays? Do we have grays? We have white. I'm almost positive we have metallic gray somewhere. Ha! Huh, hello. Yes. We do have a metallic gray. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, I had a thread caught um inside of the container. Whew. Okay. So let's grab a lid. Where the heck are the lids? Hello. Here we are. Okay. So we have our three colors. Red, orange, and gray. What was it? I'll hold it up to the camera so everyone can see. Was it that's our orange? This is our red. I'm really partial to this red. I think it looks really nice and also like very close to the NC State colors. And then this is our this is our gray, which is a very shiny metallic one. Um, with, I think, hints of blue? Eh. It's gray. It's gray. Um, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it on. And so, let's think. The needle is down, press the needle position to raise the needle. Oh, yeah. So it's when I was fiddling with the manual crank, it always wants, um, whenever you start or end things, it always wants the needle to be in a particular position, which is usually the highest position you can go, um, which is why it was yelling at me. OK. 
Okay, and that's always gonna happen um, just because it needs to reorient, it, reorient itself. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the USB stick and I'm going to throw this in there. And then this is a touch screen here, which is why I'm okay with this. I'm doing the digital part first because it'll just, it'll let me see if I need to fix anything first. Okay, so it looks things will be good. It looks like things will be good. Um, it looks like actually we made things just, just right enough. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, which order do we want it? Because we've got three hearts. Um, let's, let's do the left one to be orange, the center one to be red, and the right one to be gray. Actually, let's flip those. Gray, red, orange. Gray, whoop. Yeah, we need to wind these. <laughs> um... Okay, so this one's gonna be first, I think. Um, let's see. So I'm pressing edit end and then embroidery. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead quickly and see what's gonna happen if... Okay, so it starts with the center one first. And so what I'm doing right now is there's an LCD touchscreen right now. What you making? Yes, I am making, so I made that last stream. Um, are you saying that you weren't here last stream for, or you weren't here last stream to see what I was doing, Colin? <laughs> no. Um, what was it? I was watching, or I was, um, what was it? I digitally designed an, a PS file for embroidery through Inkscape and Inkstitch. But this week we're actually turning it into real things. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I was just joking. Um, but now, what was it? We're here. We're turning it into real things, and hoping the machine does not break. Please do not break. Um, so, uh, and it was it's just a design of three uh, geometric hearts. Um, uh, it's 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 just three geometric hearts, um, and we're gonna do them in Makerspace logo colors. Yes, yes, the machines are very finicky. You understand my pain. And the long, long hours of suffering that come with using these things. Um, and frustration. Okay, so, um, enough joking around though. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna put the cap on, because why not? Actually, I'm not, because I think it's gonna get, it's gonna make the thread tangled. Um, and I'm gonna thread the machine really quickly. So down one, up two, down three. And I'm not just counting off for no reason. Um, there's actually, so when I was talking about the guides earlier on the machine on how to thread it, they're numbered. And what often happens is that they, um, it's just, it's good for me to count out loud to keep track. Okay, and then seven, and then I cut off. Cool. Now, theoretically, when I press down, it should auto-thread the needle. If not, it's okay, but I really hope it does because I'm just bad at threading needles. <laughs> okay, so, I'm going to try that again. Let's see. And did I... Do I need to press the foot down? Okay, there we go. So now that's that's in order. Okay, so okay, now the embroidery thread is th threaded um, through the machine and into the needle and through the needle. Now the last part that I want to do is I'm going to insert the hoop into there or onto the onto the arm. Actually, hold on. Is this correct? Yes, this is correct. Okay. Let's see. 
and then you, you want to press on this little tab right here. Push down. Ah, I said push down. There we go. Hello. <sighs> Thank you. What was it? It was good seeing you, Colin. Uh, what was it? Unless, unless you don't want to leave. What was it? I didn't mean. For... Uh, <laughs> sorry. This thing makes me so frazzled. Um, okay. So this is installed. Actually, it's a little. I don't love how not hot it is right now, so I'm just gonna really quickly go ahead and pull this out and see if I can make it any tighter. Because it'll make things easier in the long run. Just just trust me. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, and then let's tighten it up a bit. Uh -huh. Ow. Dun 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 dun. What was it? And so, as for eye protection. I have glasses, um, but also, you know, like, I don't want them to, what was it? and I don't, I'm not worried that they're going to break or anything, but just in case, because the world is a scary place sometimes, you know, and it doesn't hurt to be careful and prepare for what you, for, prepare for the things that you know about. Okay. So it's, now it's tight, tight, or uh, we're gonna go back about. We're gonna go back to start. Okay. Actually, hold on. This is the center. That means I don't want to use the red one. <sighs> Planning, kids. If you plan, things just get easier. It's. Uh, um. So the reason that I'm shrugging for the people who just got here <laughs> is that. <clears throat> Ooh. is that I threaded the embroidery machine um, with this very nice silver gray. Um, I hope you all can see. Um, but it's but the design is starting at a different place. Or on a different part of the design is starting on a different part than I was in, than I thought, um, which means I want to use a different color. So we're going to start here, and I'm going to rethread it with the right color this time for the right part of design. And actually, this is something that if I was, if I had wanted to do this in digitally, and it probably would have been smart of me, is I could have subdivided the design into the actual parts of the different colors. Um, what was it? And that's, it's, it's good practice just because, why not? Um, so like as soon as it's because it's three hearts as soon as it stopped as soon as it finished uh, Stitching the first part it would automatically stop So that I could change out the thread for a new color and then hit go um, And that would have been the smart thing to do I Did not do it um, and I'm not gonna do it because I'm not already past the point of where I Would save more time doing that than not um so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna watch real carefully um okay so flip down all righty here we go okay and i'm going to start stitching was it? It also means it auto slices the thread. Yes, that too. Um, the embroidery machine, machine is really nice in that way. It'll do a lot of little things for you. Um, but yeah, I just didn't. 
Okay, so we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit start. We're just gonna hope. We're just gonna hope that it's gonna turn out okay, and that it's not gonna just explode. Oh, also, eye protection. It's important, kids. Safety first. Yes. Um, also, protect the face. Okay. Let's go. It's going. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so now we just wait. Um, but it's really, really nice. Uh, actually, I'm gonna see if I can maneuver the camera so that y'all can see this. Yeah, it's really, really cool. You gotta protect your one good eye left. Yes, yes, I do. Um. So this is, so this is, um, this is a, can maybe bring the camera down a bit. Oh, this is true. This is absolutely true. Hold on. I forgot. We jury the camera to, to one of the vents, which means that we can actually just use this as an arm and theoretically... Good to y'all. Yes. Yes. Okay, I think this looks good. Um, actually, this. What? Yeah, there we go. But yeah, this is. Yeah. Um, but we can. But, yeah, this is honestly, the, this is the best part for me. This is what I love most. It's going and it's working and all your hard work and dedication is paying off. And you also have to wash just because, you know, it, there's a good chance the needle might break or something or the stitching might get caught and there might be a nest of back stitching. But also, it's just, it's really nice to watch. Just sit and watch what you're doing. And let it, and how it's going. Also, I just like how calming it sounds. Like, I know a lot of people, like, they watch 3D printing. Um, 3D printing videos. Or, like, videos of people 3D printing. And, but this, I, 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 I personally like this more. Just listening to this. There's something soothing about, like, the needle. Okay, so now I'm gonna be really careful. Well, as soon as it stops stitching. Um, what was it? So now it's moved on to its neck position in the second heart. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see. First of all, cut it. Uh, which is why we have tiny little itty bitty scissors. Voila! What was it? Also, voila, voila, voila. Uh, that are meant for cutting small threads like this, or small, or they're meant for small um, actions like such. Okay. And then we're going to pull this thread out. Actually, we're going to pull the foot up first. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, and then this is the left one, which is why, which is, means that I want to use the gray thread. Okay. 
Actually, I, I think... I think I might want the orange star for this one. Let's see. Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay, here we go. done down which means it's time for business uh, and I'll explain that in a sec um, okay we should be good to go okay it looks like it's stitching properly Um, so when I was talking earlier about the foot being down, that's because the foot, primarily, um, whenever you're talking about, um, burning, the burnishing, the foot is this little lever in the back, um, that, you, you, uh, was it, whenever you, was it, you, that's how you engage the thread to make sure that, you know, it out, you get out. Um, I'm sure there's more function for it, and it's much more important than I'm talking about. But you can't start the machine without without it being engaged. And so the person who taught me all of this and how to use machines um, said that it meant it was time for business. Uh, whenever whenever he put it down. But yeah, it's looking really good so far. I'm really glad to say that. Um, yeah, it looks good. I'm happy about it. Okay, so now we're here, and uh, if anyone has questions, um, I am now like, I got my hands free, so I'll be free to answer them. Um, because this is also like a drop-in session, like, I keep on forgetting that because I keep on making things, um, well, then people ask stuff about it, but if anyone has questions about the, about the space of the library, this is a good time to ask now. But yeah, now we just wait. Ooh. Oh, I will say, I'm very tired. Oh, I'm ready. Making things takes a lot out of you. Um, or at least, it, it takes a lot out of me. Um, whew. I just love stuff like this. It's so nice to sit and just watch. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all just watch and share this for a second. Check and re-thread the upper thread. Okay, well, I guess my, I guess my tiny break was quick and short. Um, so let's see, let's look at what happened. Um, let me give y'all a better view. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's see. So, it looks, actually, I'm going to take this out for a really quick second. And make sure that nothing's, um, hot. It looks fine. I'm just going to snip this really quickly. Um, what was it? I'm gonna, it looks like some of the back stitching might have got tangled, which is why I'm just going to snip it off really quickly. Um, and this is something that normally you can leave to the end, but I'm going to do this now just in, because it can help prevent um, knots and, net, and just nests of thread from being built. So let's do this. Okay, so 
we're good, good to go now. We just delete thread, the upper thread again. Ba bam. Hello, here we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's pull this out really quickly. Yeah. Um, so if you can tell, it got a little knotted right there. Um, so I'm going to just cut off that bit. I cut off that end. And we're just going to rethread this, and then we're probably good to go again. Let's see. Hot. Mm -hmm. Hello. No, no, come back. Okay. There we go, finally. Okay, just flip down, thread it. Okay. Also, be careful whenever. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm pulling out the thread so that it doesn't get caught within the pedal or this bit. Um, because sometimes when you use the auto threader, it can get, uh, it can curl back up into the machine and back into the needle again. Um, and it's a good idea just to, it's, it, it's good practice just to pull it out. Okay. So let's start it up. Also, something to note when you're doing this kind of stuff, you gotta be really careful about the sound. Because sounds are really good indicators sometimes. Um, actually, let's go back. Uh, we're gonna cut this real quick, just because it was about to start the next front, the next part, and that's the gray one. Um, uh, so I heard, I don't know if the, I don't know if the mic picked this up, there was a slight fluttering that I was hearing. Um, so I'm just going to check the back to make sure the, the bobbin, the bobbin looks okay on the back. Um, it doesn't mean it does. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to pull out the thread because we're about to change to gray now. Actually, let's cut this off right here. Okay. And then let's do the gray. Ooh. So I'm just re-threading it now. With the, I'm just re-threading the machine with the gray embroidery thread. And then... Hello, hello, hello. Here we go. That is beautiful. And then we're going to put the foot down, and then we're going to thread it. Um, okay. And then we are going to move to the next stitch. And we're going to start again. So this is going to be the most complicated part, which is why I'm going to be on the most lookout. I'm going to be like high alert while watching this one, because it's got a lot of potential intersections. 
uh, it's got a, the way that I, I think that it was digitized, the path, it was roughly, well, there might have been a couple places where it was told to stitch over stitching, <coughs> or sorry, embroider over previous embroidery, um, so that's going to be interesting to watch. camera can't capture how fast how fast it's going. That is hilarious. That said, if I wanted to, I could slow down. Um, I'm not going to because we are in a, we, like, well, okay, admittedly we do have, we have like half an hour left. Um, but... down just for a hot second to show y'all. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Is it here? No, it's not tension. You, what was it? When you have the right tension, um, and I'm referring to the needle tension, tension in the back, in the back stitching, in the, in the bobbin tension, um, you don't want to, you don't want to mess with those because they're very delicate and they'll mess up the rest being your entire product sometimes. Let's see. Can I make it go slower? That is a good question. I don't think so. Well, okay. I know that we're able to. I just forget how. Which is... Something that I can look up while this thing is going. Actually. Brother
how to change the rotating speed of the machine. Let's see. Was it blah blah blah? Settings. Oh, I see. Okay. We can change it to going to the settings. Um, but to be honest, I think it's fine as it is. So. Why mess with something? You know? It's doing a fine job. But yeah. Great. Okay. Wow, this is great. Okay. I'm kind of tempted to go ahead and do this on the rest of them. Because I really like this geometric, like, tile pattern here. I kind of want to go ahead and just see if we can whip it up real quick and change and change the pattern on them right now let's see what what was it oof okay ooh hello these chairs are very high up also i can take this off now because we are done growing for a little bit wow my face is red oh it's the camera it's the camera that's it Okay, here we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all Inkscape for a second. Um, let's see. Transition. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so. This is how this is. Let's see if we can. Oh, ooh, hello. Okay, so this is. Yeah. Ooh, boy. Undo the embroidery. Yeah. It's uh, real, real hot. Okay, here we go. This is nicer, I think. I'm assuming this is still, oh, this is still embroidered. Hold on, I, okay, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna make a text file. With, the specific, where are you? I know you're here. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Seven point five five and two point eight two point one eight five. Seven point five five. Hi, what are you working on? Hi. Um, so I'm actually currently working on an embroidery. I'm currently working on digital embroidery. Um, so actually, I can transition to show you to show you really quickly. Um, let's see. What was it? So we just finished our initial design. What was it? Um, which was these three hearts. But I decided uh, was that we had some time left over, um, and that I wanted to 
make the rest of them have this tiling effect if I, if I could, um, which is what we're working on right now, the digital part of that. Um, so yeah. What was it? That's that. Let's see, hold on. Let me pull up escape again. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so this is what we're working on right now. Um, and I'm writing down the numbers of the position right now so that I don't actually have to change anything about the it's it's easier to, it's easier to position this correctly in Inkscape for the design than it is to position it um, by moving around the fabric, uh, which is why I'm doing this. Okay, so let's let's see. Seven point five five. Actually, hold on. Um. Right millimeters. Okay, never mind then. Sixty-seven point three two seven. 67.327. Nope. Come back. 7. What was it? And then 45.618. Um, and this is going to be x. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bigger. This is gonna be Y, and then this is gonna be height, and then width, um, and so the height of this is 99.377, let's see, 95.377, and then Let's see, what is this? Oh, 99.377 and then 165.100. I think, I could be wrong. That feels like a really big amount of millimeters. 165.100, okay, no, bigger than that. Okay, so I think, 165.100, Okay, this looks right. So now I'm gonna undo, oh no. Um, let's see. I'm actually just gonna copy this thing. And then we're gonna just undo until we hit to a point where before embroidery. Undo. Did we really? Oh no. Oh no. Actually, can we just open the SVG file? Maybe that'll be easier to work with. Um. Let's see. I don't know if there's any way we can undo <laughs> embroidery. Uh, let's see. Can we? Uh, this is a good question. Let's. This is this is a question for the internet. Uh, yeah, this is a question for the internet. You might have baked the stitches in if enough operations occurred since the move to stitch. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm happy with it as it is, so I'm not gonna be, so I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go home crying, um, if it's like this. I just wanna know, I just wanna know, maybe, what was it, um, ink stitch, undo embroidery, let's see, remove embroidery settings, the page was not found, no, uh, let's see. Installation, blah blah blah, add layers, ignore object. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I should, I can, also I can show y'all what's happening while I'm doing this. Let's see, let's see whether or not <laughs> this is ir irreplaceable. 
Um, okay. Let's see. Because this looked really, really promising. Remove embroidery settings. Oh no. Oh no. Let's see. Stitch library question mark? No, these are all the stitches. Interface. Yes? Question mark commands? Attach visual commands. Oh, okay. That's what commands are for. Fun. Okay, well that's good. That's fine and dandy. <laughs> Let's see, what else is there? Uh, commands. What was it? Filled? Um, frequently asked questions. Blank cinch doesn't run. Disabled. Using ink stitch. Ink stitch. Known issues. Fun. These. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Because I really like it. I probably should have saved it. That would have been smart. I probably should have saved it without anything. Um. Let's see. Export and import files. No. Hidden features. Color blending. What? Whoa, what? Hold on. That's why it's kept 100%. That's why it's kept hidden. If you use the XML editor to add the hidden setting, you'll get an effect like the one described in number 78, exponent modifier for fill and satin. This is actually really cool. Certain shapes with complicated holes seem to cause the autofill algorithm to run forever and never finish, and you have to kill the process manually. But for most shapes, it seems to do the job. Combine two fills going in opposite directions, and you'll and you'd get a gradient fill. So this is the part of InkStitch I was talking about, which is open source and beautiful, but also sometimes janky. Um, yeah. I mean, that's it. It's not that hard to redo this. The most annoying part would probably just getting things into the into the um, into the hoop again. Why don't we? Maybe this is maybe this is next maybe this is next uh, this is uh, next next week's project. Um, let's see. Hold on. Okay, so we're gonna call today a success. Um, I've just determined today to be a success all around, and for the rest of today, we're just gonna do some research, you know, together. Nope. Sorry. Hold on. Um, and we're just gonna do some research together about. What was it? So, is this a success? This is a success. I think it's highly amazing. Yeah, um, and I'm happy with how it is. And also, we are not meeting any other person's guidelines, so I can say that I'm done whenever I'm done. So, um, fun fact: deadlines are made up. No, they're not. I am joking. Please don't take that seriously. But, um. Yeah, it's good. I think it's good. Like, we legitimately, we set out to do everything that we wanted to do originally, and it looks really good. Um, the only thing left is if we want to make it fancier. Um, so, on that note, actually, let's really quickly go to Inkscape first for a hot second. And get rid of... Let's see if we can redo everything back to okay so maybe not not with that but no yep. what's next okay cool I think that's it um, I'm gonna save it like this so that next time we know where to pick up on. But also, if we want to, I wonder if we can actually go ahead and just make, ooh, this is a good question. Oh, 
Oh, hello. What? Oh, jeez. This is interesting. Um, I'm gonna see if I can start the basis of the next thing. Uh, of next week's project, which is the gradient fill. Let's see, Firefox. Let's see, transition. Okay, here we go. So we're all just gonna do some research together. Um, how hard would it would it be to implement the exponent algorithm used, used in Interpolate as a modifier for the stitch spacing for fill and satin? This would be very useful for color blending. Oh, this is GitHub. Okay. Oh, oh, this is an actual. Okay, this makes sense now. Okay, cool. For color blending, density. That's a really cool fill, I think. This is, oh my god, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. That's so pretty. Hmm. The math is easy. The, trick, the tricky bit is figuring out where the stitches in each row should fall, but it's definitely a solvable problem. Great feature idea. That'll be a great way to quickly get out color blends. The topper is a good translation of what some commercial programs do now. The old way, we'd have to break each section down and do it separately for the changes of density in the levels. So... Now we're gonna we're now, okay. So now we're gonna be talking about a lot of uh, math question mark and coding question mark. Um, so we're gonna see how that works out. It includes a hidden feature I use for gradient blending on the patch. You can use the XML editor to add the hidden setting. Okay, here's a tutorial file. Okay, we're gonna uh, open this tutorial file up, question mark. Oh, I see, okay, hold on. Let me drag Inkscape up. Um, and add actually another Inkscape, window capture. Mm -hmm. Inkscape 2. Um, what was the tutorial? Sure. Okay. Okay, transition. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see this. So, let's see this. <laughs> let's see, it looks like Control Shift X. Oh boy, hello. Um, let's see if we can make this bigger. And also make this bigger. <laughs> We're gonna get rid of the film stroke for a hot second. Click to select node, strike to rearrange. Okay, here's the XML editor. Um, so now we want to go into... I have absolutely no clue. Um, hold on, so this is SVG 8. Layer 1, layer 2. So then within layer 2, we want to choose... A rectangle, except I don't see a rectangle. Let's see. Hmm. What was it? I see. Ah, here we go. That was layer three. This is layer two. Here we go. I do rectangle A2, right? A28. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is if you want to code. Okay. So, right. I forgot. This was made by open source people. So, um, the XML editor, it looks like it's a way to manually code in any, like, any embroidery thing that you would do or any, um, I don't know how to phrase this. Basically, instead of clicking and dragging, um, 
or double clicking or using you know using any of the commands through the UI here in any of the tools you can just code it in um, which uh, depending on how you think about things may or may not be better for you um, yeah yep the view in X Inkscape is an SVG XML is the underlying structure yeah 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 um, so if you wanted to you can just code this in manually and you would theoretically never actually have to see it you could just code it um what was it okay but anyways so let's look at this um embroidery angle in row spacing millimeter attribute how do i attribute lower node undent node Assuming no delete node, duplicate node, new text node, new element node. Fun. How do I attribute things? Uh, actually, okay, it looks like the user can create a fill shape with a standard SVG gradient on it. Um, that is, they can tweak the gradient however they like, and they'll see it as a true gradient in Inkscape. User runs an extension to convert gradient to embroidery. Oh, I see. Okay, so this was this was the old way of doing this. Of I have absolutely no idea. No idea. Hold on. This is the design layer. What is this? Text. Now, where's the? No. Not that. Where are you? Here we go, color block. Um, okay, hello, what the, what is going on here? Okay, so this is what this is normally. Um, embroidery and row spacing. Fun, I think maybe we'll to do it with a gradient fill now. Maybe, maybe. Um, so because they were talking, I was, listen, so when I was reading um, the rest of the GitHub comments, about it, it's it was talking about potentially doing it that way. So we're just gonna make a quick shape and see if that'll work out that way. Hello? Hello? Okay, apparently this is very just stuck. So we're gonna try the other <laughs> Inkscape instead. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. So this is this, and then we're gonna make this gradient fill here. Radial gradient, linear gradient. This is what I want. Also, I'm gonna turn on the stroke because this is what I was using earlier for the for the square or for the parts because it was easier that way. But let's um, stroke style. Yeah, let's turn this down to like a normal size of like 0 0.05. I don't actually know how big they're supposed to be. Not positive, but it might need to be close to use the GUI editing. Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. I mean, I, we're here now, so I think it's fine. But like, that is a good point. I'll try that next time. Point zero or point one question mark yeah we can see it now cool okay so I'm gonna zoom out really quickly hello hello here we go okay cool move this over here just in case um, it might change things with the rest of my embroideries um, and then let's see what happens if we say extensions ink stitch fill to commands Satin tools, troubleshoot, visualize and export. No. Fill tools, break apart fill objects. No. Okay, so. Let's see. Uh, what did it say that it wanted? Runs an extension, convert gradient to embroidery. Uh, let's see. 
Hold on. Let's see what happens if we just visualize it. If we see the simulator. Because maybe it'll just automatically do it. Because it has been a year since like since the last time someone updated anything on the on the file. Uh okay. Hello? Also, there is five minutes left, so if anyone has any questions, um what was it? Throw them at me now, before we are, you know, before I see y'all in two weeks. Uh, let's see. Huh. Okay, so it turns out it's just, it did not like that. It did not like trying to visualize it. Ooh, okay. Python just really did not like that. Okay. Stroke paint. Uh, let's just get rid of the strokes for a hot second. Maybe that. Maybe that's it. Okay. So there's that. Let's see what happens. Can we just? Actually, what happens if we open up the UMLX editor again? Control Shift X. Um, we're gonna get rid of this for a second. What was it? And then we say the old way would be to say would be to copy this, throw this in there, and make the value like. 0, 0.0, what, uh, yes, 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 this is, what was it, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, we are wrapping up, but if you got any more questions, um, we can direct you to someone else, um, who can help you, um, what was it, and honestly, we, we know a lot of people, the, the library is a well-rounded place, um, Was it? They set theirs to zero, so I'm just gonna set mine to zero. See what happens. And then what happens if we then just say, let's um, zero zero point four. Actually, okay, let's do one because why not? And then let's see what happens if we can stitch simulator. Okay, it's trying. It's trying, but it's not going very well. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Uh it's gonna be two weeks until the next time we see each other. Um so well, as was it according to the plan now. So, I love y'all. Thank you for letting me have such an amazing stream with y'all. This was so much fun. I love sharing this with y'all. This was like my favorite machine and I'm just really glad I got to do this um, with everybody um, and share it with the internet because it, this is what the internet is for. Um, so, what was it? I love y'all. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, Please stay safe and what was it? If you what was it, if you need us, what was it? Um, you can. I was gonna do a ghost but Ghostbusters reference, but that's not it. Anyways, <laughs> um, have a good week, y'all. What was it? We're gonna we're gonna start this next week. Be excited. Alrighty, adios. <laughs>